This is Adam Regelman again, one of Quartz's co-founders, and this video is going to focus on Quartz's inventory module. To get started, just click the Inventory tab and you'll be taken inside. If I look over to the left, I can see two inventories, a private inventory, which is for my eyes only, and the inventories of the groups I'm a member of, in this case, the Charles Darwin Lab. If I click the default view setting, I can easily change the inventory I see when I sign into Quartz E. Now an inventory is only as good as the items it contains, and this one's empty, so let's add some stuff. To start adding, click the giant orange Add Item button. There are three ways that Quartzy makes it easy to populate your inventory. First, we host catalogs from vendors, so if you're adding an item from one of their catalogs, all you need to do is enter the vendor name and catalog number and everything else will auto-populate. I simply select a type and click More Details and I can see that all the technical information has been pulled in from the Invitrogen catalog. Just like milk and lunch meats, research biologics and chemicals have expiration dates. With Quartzy, you can easily input the expiration date and you can have the system send you an email reminder 30 days beforehand so you don't accidentally use expired antibody on that important western blot. Now I just click save and presto, the items in my inventory for all in my lab to see. The second way Quartzy makes it easy to get your inventory onto the site is by allowing you to upload thousands of items at once. Let's say I already have an Excel file, or I've exported my FileMaker database as a CSV file, and I want to upload it onto Quartzy. Well, we make that as easy as pie. Just go to the Add Item page and click the Upload Excel button. The next page will give you detailed instructions on how to get your inventory up onto the site. Let's say I want to upload some antibodies. I can expand the antibody type and make sure all the fields I care about are there. If not, I can add some of my own. I keep track of the clone number for my antibodies, so I'll enter that field to make sure it appears in the Excel template I'm about to download. I think I'm all set as far as the antibodies go, so I'll check off the antibody type and then click Download Excel Template and Quartzy will shoot an Excel workbook right to my computer. Okay, here I am in the Excel template that I downloaded from Quartzy. On the first page are instructions, and then each type I downloaded appears as an individual worksheet. If I click on antibody, I see that all the fields I care about are there, and if I scroll all the way over, I can even see the clone field I entered. I'm going to paste an antibody in here from my pre-existing database and save the file. Now I go back to the Quartzy website, scroll down to step 4, and upload the file. Quartzy's super fancy software scans the file and then tells me it's going to upload one antibody. I say yes. And like magic, it appears in my Quartzy inventory. The final and probably easiest way to populate your Quartzy inventory is just to send us whatever you have to info at Quartzy.com and we'll get it up on the site in under a day. Now let's talk about location tracking. On Quartzy, there are three location categories, container, box, and row column. But you can use them to mean whatever you want. For example, some Quartzy users use container to mean room and box to mean shelf. Container is the broadest location field and appears in the inventory filters. While I'm adding a new item to my inventory, I can also add a new container. I'm going to put this item in my minus 20. Once I click save, I can see that the location is displayed. Now, let's say I only want to see items in my minus 20. I simply filter my inventory by that container, and voila! That's all I see. And of course, you can always use our powerful search and advanced search features to quickly find items you're looking for. In addition to vendor purchased items, many Quartzy folks use the site to keep track of experimental samples or stuff they make in lab, like cell lines or bacterial stocks. You can add these items as non-vendor items from within Quartzy or upload them using our Excel template, just like with commercial items. Part of why Quartzy is used by tens of thousands of researchers from all over the world is because it's so flexible. For example, we even let you customize the columns you see in your inventory. I'm just going to check off price, 
unit size, CAS number, and file, and once I click Save, those are the columns displayed. Some scientists want to keep a local backup of their inventory. That's no problem with Quartzy. All you need to do is click the Inventory Backup setting on the left and select whether you want Quartzy to send you a weekly or a monthly backup. Now let's get back to that inventory and delete some stuff. I just select a few items, hover over More, and click Delete. What about the types or categories for inventory items? Can I customize those? I'm glad I asked. Yes, I can. Just click the Custom Types link at the top of the page. When you first join, you'll have three types already in your inventory, called Chemical, General Supply, and Solutions. If you need more, you can either add one of Quartzy's suggested types, like Antibody, Bacterial Stock, Chemical, etc., or you can add your own by clicking the giant orange Add New Type button at the top of the screen. Our suggested types have common fields associated with them, but if they don't meet your needs, you can add your own fields to each type so you can track the information that you care about. Had enough yet? Well, there's more. As a group admin, you can set the editing privileges within a group's inventory. Since this is a group setting, you'll have to go to the group's area. Now click the Edit link, and then Advanced Group Options. By default, editing privileges are set so only the person who adds an item, or a group administrator, can edit it. But if everybody in your lab gets along famously, you can simply click Everyone in Group, and then everybody can pitch in. When you're done, just click the Create or Save button at the bottom, and your settings will be in the system. So now you know how to use Quartzy's inventory module, you're all set to get your lab up on the site and make your research move faster. And as always, if you have any questions or concerns about the site, don't hesitate to email me, adam at quartzy.com.